My name is Monica Gleberman, and you're listening to Silence on Set Podcast. On today's podcast, we're talking to the showrunner and cast from Vikings Valhalla about its upcoming season two. Season two finds our heroes shortly after the tragic fall of their beloved town, an event that has shattered their dreams and altered their destinies. Finding themselves suddenly fugitives in Scandinavia, they are forced to test their ambition and courage in the world beyond the comforts of everything they've ever known. So to start us off, here's executive producer and showrunner Jeb Stewart. I just think you're a genius in terms of the show and just everything that you've created, this world. I'm fascinated. I'm obsessed. I wanted to ask you, you know, for the finale. Well, first of all, I guess, what was the process like for you creating the show? And then you left us in chaos in that (laughs) finale. So how do you then move the story along for season two? I love the show too. And I love it because, you know, I love the themes that we get to play with. And I love the, the, the era that we get to play with. I love the fact that it was a very brief but wonderful period of time where, you know, you could almost have a, a true egalitarian culture where men and women women could share similar situations where women could divorce their husbands or own property or rule countries. And no one, you know, blinked about that. You can do that organically in the writing. So you can create real female roles without feeling like you've bent history into a pretzel to, to tell the story. I love the period because so much is going on, dealing with so many of the same problems that we're still dealing with today, whether it's immigration, whether it's religious wars or cultural wars and things like that. And I think that that was one of the big selling pieces as we were casting this is is looking into your own personal life and saying, how can I translate that into the 11th century? So it's been a real fun project. Sometimes I feel like I've got the whole Farm and <laughs> Bailey circus up here, you know, just kind of flipping rings around and stuff like that but I'm loving doing that and I'm 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 glad it shows and I'm glad you like the show. Oh my gosh, I love it. I have no idea how you guys are able to form full characters, full storylines with the massive amount of cast that you guys have. It all makes sense. It's interesting. It's like binge worthy. Like it's just like you cannot get enough of it. One of the things that we try to do is I come from the feature world. And the cool thing about the feature world is that, you know, the director is able to tell so much of that story visually. You know, in other words, it, it typically if you're if you're working with a wonderful director, and I've been had the good fortune for many, many years to work with some top, top directors, you try to tell the story so visually so that the audience is part of that storytelling. And one of the things I'll never forget, I when I was in film school, I can remember that in the old days, people would say, well, you, you know, you need at least two seconds to comprehend an image. And then suddenly MTV comes in and the images go like this. You know, they go by at a tenth of the second. And nobody had a problem following that story. So if you right. extrapolate, you know, what you're talking about, if you let the camera tell the story and you don't put two people in a room saying, hi, I'm Jeb and this is how we do it. We're going to walk out that door and go get, a, you know, a cup of coffee and stuff like that. Let's just go out the door and get a cup of coffee. I know that sounds like everybody does that, but it's hard to do that successfully. And when you do that, when you allow the directors to do that in television, especially this type of television, the audience is in it. And the audience is suddenly looking at that canvas and saying, what are they trying to tell me? What are they trying to tell me? As opposed to me actually telling you in dialogue. Anyway, we strive for that all the time, but it's still television. It's you're still on the clock. What can we expect kind of going into season two? How do you prep and what are we going to see or what can you kind of tease? I will say that season two takes, you know, that world that we had and we've created these heroes and then we pulled as you said the rug out from under them i want to see how they how they function when they don't have their support group when they don't have the people to lean on when freitas is on her own when harold doesn't have somebody to get his coffee in the morning and he's no longer the presumptive king of norway when he's actually a fugitive on the road and he has to go how to learn how to become a leader when nobody really cares who his what his pedigree is and i think we need to see how leif handles the loss of Liv in his life. I mean, can he become a forgiving person? And does forgiveness kind of lead him on a path toward Christianity and away from paganism? You know, forgiveness is a big right. ticket item. So there's a lot to do, but there's still going to be a big action show. There's lots of adventure in an incredible, you know, road journey down the Niper River to Constantinople that Leif and Harold go on. And you know, that can only lead to no good. So there's going to be a lot of 
fun things to watch. Here's Sam Cortlett, Frida Gustafson, and Leo Settler to talk about their characters and what fans can expect for this upcoming season. I want to know, because it was so chaotic in the finale, where are all of your, your characters at that moment in that last episode? And where do we find them when we come back in season two? What can fans kind of expect for this crazy ride for next season? Well, he's bleeding out. He's, uh, he's taking a big axe to the side and he thinks that he's he's lost Freydis he thinks that it's all over and actually he gets he gets rescued and good old Freydis nurses him back to health at the beginning of season two and they're having this beautiful honeymoon period living in a cottage in the hills but um I think both of those characters realize that they can't stay there forever they've got a they can't hide from the problems of the real world and in season two they're going to have to face those challenges head on the finale of season one was just so incredibly emotional. I mean, for Freitas to face off against Yalcora, the baddie, and, you know, being able to overcome that and kill him. and But then to lose Yal Hokan, her mentor and her, you know, best friend and kind of guiding star, it's a turmoil. And to see everyone around her just, you know, perish, the all the shield maidens. And she makes a impulsive, quick decision in a way to leave her beloved brother behind and bet on this guy and <laughs> just take a horse and, and gallop away and when we meet her in season two she's um, coping with you know dealing with those uh, decisions and um, trying to uh, accept the fact that she is the last and she has a responsibility towards her people yeah we we, we finish off uh, season one with him deep in grief and deep in rage and expressing a part of himself that he's perhaps suffocated for quite some times and, and and needed to release it and accept it. And then in season two, we open with him attempting to uh, uh, place that uh, anger in a righteous place and find justice for some of the deaths that were caused to his beloved. And it uh, doesn't quite go to plan. However, he does find uh, purpose elsewhere. And uh, certainly the brotherhood is formed with much more strength. And uh, yeah, well, he says goodbye to his sister in the, at the start of season two and they part ways, but certainly uh, her thoughts are always in his body. And I have to ask a fun question because I know all the along people are going to be asking you like tough things. I got to talk about the hair. <laughs> you guys have some fantastic, gorgeous hair. All three of you. Yes. <laughs> We're just like, yes, they're yes really me too. I'm included. <laughs> what do you guys do? I need to know because my hair just does not look as good as the three of you. So who's using what products? I'm full of product. I'm probably quite flammable at the moment. But yeah, it was. I, I've been filming something else, and it was much longer. And then when they had to chop it off, to just a few inches, it was it was emotional because there's a lot of hard work and sweat in those in those strands of hair. So, but yeah, I love it. I've never had long hair before, so it's been a, a journey of discovery. My is trick it? is kind of just salt water and sweat. What are you most excited about for fans to see for season two? A spiritual journey and a physical journey of expansion. Yeah, uh, we're diving into a new world, so you get to see these characters that people hopefully love doing really incredible new things in new places. So I'm really thrilled for people to see that. For me, Harold is like betting on himself, betting everything on a boxing match, which is was very fun to film and is a big high octane action sequence. So yeah, hope people enjoy that. Hope you guys enjoyed listening to the cast and the showrunner talk about Vikings Valhalla and what fans can expect for its upcoming season two. The show will premiere January 12th of 2023 with eight episodes that are 49 minutes each so don't forget to check it out and make sure you head over and hit the subscribe button so you're updated on all of our latest podcasts and head over to our youtube channel hit subscribe so you're updated on all of our video content